because of the prevalence of the photograph, uh, the virtual means of representation now that you have in the classroom, uh, the internet, all of these uh, processes. I mean, it's not surprisingly that this decline of the medical collection, the museum, happened at the turn of the 80s. The medical museum cease, has ceased to function as a vibrant sp space of exploration and education. It's now a, a relic, in fact, and contains relics uh, that are particularly uh, provocative since they cannot be, they can no longer be, in fact, shown in many cases or, in fact, sampled as they were. In an ideal world, uh, as far as the museum's collections are concerned, it would be nice to have all the pots in this sort of condition. However, uh, a lot of collections that we get hold of now uh, have pots in, in this sort of condition. The, the levels are, are, are obviously going down. Why is that? Because it doesn't appear to be leaking, um, but they do say that the perspex actually breathes. So what we want to do is actually put some fluid back. Um, Paul rescued this collection about 20 years ago, and we've only just taken a legal ownership of it. So now it's all come out of the cupboard. It's been in cupboards for 20 years. But this collection's extra special because it's from the Great Ormond Street Hospital. So what I'll do, I'm just going to put those on. About 25 years ago, well in 85 it was, I saw the Great Ormond Street collection. The, the museum itself was going to be used for offices. Right. So, so I said, okay, well I'll take it. I got a few technicians to help me every so often. We go down and pick, pick this thing up and it took, oh I dread to think how long it took. So we cleaned them all and then brought them up here. They went into the seminar room and that's where they stayed for, well, since they had about 1985. And in total there's 2,800 on the books. I've never had the time to actually find out exactly what we've got and what sort of condition they're in. And as you can see from this, that the majority of them do need something done. They stopped collecting in I think the 70s, 1970, was the last specimen we've got. As you've seen from the plaster cast, they date from about 1860, is about the earliest one that we've got. So this is another collection that's also in a bit of a sad state. Um, this is the Middlesex uh, Hospital Collection, crammed in. <laughs> it's like Aladdin's cave. Well, it's probably a gruesome ladding scale. We've kind of come to understand that this is a really significant and valuable collection. And I'm really keen to try and help Paul and obviously preserve this collection. That's just because I, I see the value in it and obviously that's my job and that's what I kind of want to do, is to kind of make a better future for this collection. Because I think it'd be tragedy if it would just be put into a cupboard again and never looked at. I'm sure there'll be people all around the world and researchers and medical historians and sort of, that would be really interested in this collection. Good. And that's it. It'll be closer to the students and the medical school and the main campus um, and the idea is it might get used a bit better and a bit different because although we've got the space here um, it's obviously up in Hampstead whereas every, all the students are down in Bloomsbury. We're hoping to design some really nice um, kind of bespoke teaching spaces. Um, we don't have a public license, so we can't put all of this on display like a classic public museum. But what we want to do is have really nice teaching spaces so that students and staff that come in to use the spaces, all of this will be on display, but obviously it'd be closed to the public, um, rather than having them in these cupboards. What yeah. makes you want to keep on collecting pieces then? It's to stop them disappearing. 
I've always thought they're important, and especially nowadays, they're actually even more important because you won't get them again. So really, as far as I'm concerned, these actually get more and more valuable every single day because we're not going to get these. And especially with this sort of specialisation, it's very unlikely we'll ever see this again. And to say that, to be honest, <laughs> to stand in Hampstead and say, I don't think there's anything like this in the world, and I believe that. So um, I think it is important. Um, but it does need effort, people, and resources to get it back into the condition that it should be.